Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we'll be setting up, time-lapsing, harvesting, weighing, and discussing this. This is a shelved NFT indoor hydroponic system that has Spiderfarm SF600 grow lights, three shelves of 14 propagation spaces for our cotton wool propagation technique, lettuce seedlings that you can grow salad in to feed your family at home. So the full build is available in the link above my head, but for now we're going to do a quick recap before we time lapse. Previously on Who Chose. Okay, so the final week didn't time lapse for some reason, and that is the gap in growth that you see between the last shot and this next scene, which I filmed before I realized. And will you have a look at that grow? Now, I did go on holidays and I left the lettuce a little bit longer than I would have liked. I wouldn't want it to get 
any taller than this at all because this is almost touching the light and I want to warn you against letting your plants touch your lights in just a second. But this system is absolutely phenomenal. I'm happy to recommend it and I don't get to say that very often. The design itself is perfect. The only thing I'd change, just like I said in the first video, I will get a larger shelving unit so that you can easily change that reservoir by just dragging it out, pushing it back under, refilling the nutrient in that manner because it's going to get a bit tedious for me to change this reservoir where I've planned to have this system. I'm actually going to have this system inside my own house so that I don't have to go out to the greenhouse and pick lettuce, which is a statement in and of itself as to how well this system has panned out. So the reason that I wouldn't allow the lettuce to touch these lights is, unlike other lights that are on the market, the Spider Farmer SF series don't have any protective coating on the diodes. And as you can see with this light, this is the SF 300. And you can see that where my mini NFT hydroponic system is, I let the plants grow up into it and it has shorted out the drivers on the face of this SF 300. And this whole section of LEDs no longer works. Um, I don't run this anymore because I think that it's probably an electrical hazard. But what happens is the leaves will grow up to the light and they will transpire onto the light. But because the leaves are touching the surface of something, the water just builds up and it will short the diode. This is actually what I consider a design fault in these lights. Uh, I wish they had either a lens or a coating. I don't think that we'd lose too much light from a lens, but a coating would be ideal just so that we can get around this problem that I've had with them before. So if you are going to purchase these lights, just be mindful of that fact. There is no coating on the top and I would not let your plants get any larger than I have these plants here. So a really good result. We can now take the system apart. I'll weigh the lettuce and let you know how much lettuce I've been able to grow within this form factor. So I'm just going to disconnect the top light, take off the light itself so we can have a look. Have a look at that. That is awesome. You can see the line in the lettuce where the light was and created this purple leafing. It's almost like one of those magnetic sheets you get so that you can see where the magnets are, except for light. That's pretty awesome. That is a heap of lettuce. Uh, all right, I'm gonna disconnect the other lights and then I can start taking the lettuce out. Okay, so this is probably not how I suggest harvesting, but it's gonna be the quickest way for me to empty the system out. So I'm just gonna run a knife straight across the channels and that means I'll be able to also show you the channel and all the roots in place and I'll just, you know. And just run a knife and then I can measure the lettuce. So I can tear both of those and add in my lettuce. And this is all going to be edible lettuce as well because I'm not including the roots or the stalks. And these are, these are really lovely heads of lettuce too. The system's done a really good job of growing a, like a nice consolidated lettuce head. I'm pretty impressed. On the first row, we've got 1.37 kilograms or 1370 grams I'll do the second one like, look at this lettuce it's beautiful huh. that's the base it's just a really nice consolidated head okay the second one is 1.6 kilograms Now I'll do the last one. And that one is also 1.6, 1 1.653. 1.653. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. Okay, so that is interesting. That is really interesting because the reason I think we're getting more leafy matter from the systems on the bottom two shelves, so 1.37 kilograms on the top, 1.623 in the middle and 1.653 
kilograms on the bottom is because I believe that the light pollution from the top lights is giving the bottom two rungs slightly more energy, causing them to produce slightly more. Now, it's obviously not enough to produce further down than one rack. So the top rack is causing the one below to produce slightly more, and the, and the middle rack is causing the one below to produce slightly more. But I don't think that the top rack would be causing the bottom rack. Oh, and that's the blackout that was planned for today. <laughs> oh. Um, let me just turn on some studio lights. This is the problem with the NFT systems that I've been having because I'm gonna have to actually, oh, hang on, let me just get the lights. Okay, so as you can see, I've just got some battery powered studio lights on here. So this is actually a problem I've been having um, recently. There's been a lot of work on the power lines and it's quite annoying because it turns off, as you can see, my NFT is turned off here uh, the outdoor NFT is turned off also and the schedule maintenance actually send me a little card in the post box when they're doing it so I can plan ahead and have the NFT systems running on backup batteries but I want to get away from relying on grid power for this reason because if I was a hydroponic farm and all my NFT systems went offline well that's not acceptable because recently I had all my lettuce die and I had to replant the com system completely um, because I was actually warned, I just forgot about it. And um, we'll be setting up some off-grid solar NFT very soon, just out of necessity, as you can see, um, this happens semi-regularly. Um, so weighing, so let's add up the lettuce weigh and we'll have a look at the roots in our system. 1.37 plus 1.6 plus 1.6. So we got 4.64 kilograms of lettuce off these three runs. The runs themselves had these weights respectively. And that that is actually a fantastic result. 4.64 kilograms of lettuce is nothing to turn your nose up at. And I definitely could not eat that much in my household alone anyway. How good, I, I'm still blown away with this system. So let's have a look at the runs. So here's the fun part, <laughs> the root porn. <laughs> so there is no overlap at the end. This is exactly how it was. And you can see there, the roots have terminated as the water flows down the exit. So we can actually just pull this <laughs> oh, how good. And you can see there, look at that. It's really hard without studio lighting. Uh, you can see how white the roots are. Look at that. Really nice white roots. That is the termination at the plugged end where the water comes in. And you can see all of, all of our plants have just intermingled and really nice roots. And the other termination is there. So that's where it drops down. Now, if we look at this, in comparison to the pipe size, we've actually got nowhere near the volume of the pipe. And the cotton wool technique itself has just been overtaken by the roots. Um, I don't even think I could find a cotton ball there, but it's in just at the base of these plants. And they do not affect the system at all. The plants just overtake the cotton wool technique. And that is that essentially. Okay, so now the reservoir and wow, almost out. So, so as you can see in there, I'm almost out of nutrient and I topped that up once. 
Uh, I went from half full and I just topped it up with water and that was perfect for the grow. So this is the perfect size reservoir for a single grow. Um, but that is a lot of lettuce off a single grow, like uh, <laughs> four, four and a half kilos off a single grow is not bad at all. The calculation on that is, what is this? 100 liter Montgomery, 100. So each lettuce took 3.57 liters. If we divide 150 by 14 times three, we get 3.57 per each. So 3.57 liters per each lettuce, which falls directly into Crack Key's recommendations for lettuce, which is three to six, I think. And that means that with the nutrient that I went through, which was 100 liters of nutrient, I only required 50 grams of each of both the Diamond Spec T and the Nitro Cal. Let's just do a quick calculation. So I get my nutrient for about $200 for the 25 kilos uh, of both. And that means that my nutrient is about $8 a kilo. Now, I've put 50 grams of A and B into this, which means that the cost to refill this system was about 40 cents. That's ridiculous. How outrageous. That can't be right. Four and a half kilos of lettuce for 40 cents. Hmm. There you have it. That is the shelved indoor NFT propagation system for cotton wool ball lettuce. And that is one of the most successful builds and grows that I've ever done. I'm really happy that I was able to provide you guys with this information because I think it's gonna help a lot of people. Um, whether or not you go for the spider farmer or other lights, whether or not you use this shelving system design or you go for the bigger shelving system design, you're gonna get a good result. and. I'm happy to recommend this system. All right, I'm gonna go and sit in a dark corner somewhere and ponder some new hydroponic systems. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hoochos. <laughs> that was phenomenal. <laughs> uh.